And now let's take a look at this um, challenge description. So it's heap two, it's a binary exploitation challenge. So it says here, can you handle function pointers? Download the binary here, download the source here. Additional details will be available after launching your challenge instance. Okay, so we've got uh, two links over here, one for the binary that we're going to be dealing with and one for the source code. I will include links for both of those in the chat. Okay, so now let's go to our web shell and let's navigate to the directory over here. So it's going to be heat2. So there's no such file or directory. Let's, uh, oh, hold on. Okay, so I've got the challenge, um, the challenge binary here, and I've got the source file right here, uh, which I've renamed to source.c. So when you download the challenge file right here, uh, chal, C-H-A-L-L, uh, you'll find that it is not executable. So what you need to do is you need to run the following command to make it um, executable. So chmod plus x and then chll. Ch-A-L-L. -L. And that's going to make the file executable. Okay, so let's take a look at the source file right here. So source.c, well, for you it's going to be chal.c, but I'm going to uh, use the nano text editor. Okay, so we've got, we've defined a flag size max buffer over here as 64. So that, that means that uh, there is 64 bytes allocated to this particular um, buffer. Okay, memory buffer. Okay, so immediately here we see that there is a, uh, there's a win function right here that prints out the flag. So it's going to take the number of characters in the buffer, flag size max, and it's going to open the flag.txt file and read it, and then it's going to print it, and then it's going to flush and then exit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find a way to activate this function inside of the, um, inside the program. Okay, so here, so I think it's it's easier to demonstrate this by uh, by running the uh, the program. So I'm going to get out of here, and we're going to run the shell. Uh, actually, what I need to do is I I need to create a flag file inside of this uh, program here. So so not inside the program, but I just need to create a um, a flag to be accessed inside this file. So I'm going to echo. We got the flag, and I'm going to redirect this into flag.txt. So if for some reason we're able to um, compromise the program and get it to run the win function, then it's going to print out the, the contents of the flag right here. Okay, so let's try running the program. So I have a function, I sometimes like to call it, maybe you should change it. Okay, so we can print out um, the contents of the heap. And we have our, as in the previous challenges, we've got our pico and bico values over here. And uh, this time, what we're, we're not trying to change the value of um, bico over here to pico, like we did in the last challenge. But what we need to do is we need to point um, the, point the, the bico the Bico memory space over here to the win function. So how do we do that? Let's uh, let's take a look at um, what we have inside the program first. Okay, so we can we can print x and x is equal to the Bico. But what we want to do is we want to change this to the memory location where where the win function is located. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the R2. Um, the Radare, the Radare two binary exploitation 
uh, framework in order to do so. So I'm going to exit out of here first. So what I need to do is, let me grab my notes. Binary exploitation, and this is heat two. Okay, so we're going to use Rudare two to analyze the um, to analyze this binary file here. So it's going to be Chell. So what we need to do is we're going to use the Robin two function. Sorry, Robin two program. And we're going to take a look at this program right here. It's Robin2 is going to give us a bunch of uh, information about this program. So it's got a lot of um, different information about, uh, about this program. Uh, so the architecture is x86 and um, it's a ELF binary and it's a 64-bit binary. But uh, what we need to take note of right here is that um, this program goes in little endian order. So we talked about little endian in the first challenge we were talking about what, what we solved in uh, today's session, but little endian basically means that the bytes go in uh, from the end of the string first and then goes to the beginning of the string. It basically means that we have to enter the bytes in reverse order uh, whenever we're dealing with this program. Okay, so that's what we get from the Robin2 program. Next, we're going to use uh, Radare2, the, the main Radare2 program, R2, and then dash D for debug, and slash A for analyze. And then we're going to specify the file, which is the chow file right here. Let me take a little drink. Okay, so we're going to run the program. And the Radare2 program has analyzed all of the flags and all the functions. So this is, uh, this is very, very convenient for us. So next we're going to print out, the, um, print out the information about the functions. And in Radare2, it's the AFL command. So we run that. And then it gives us the, uh, the, the memory location of all of these different functions within the program. Okay, and I think what we're looking for is this function right here, which is check win. No, we're not, we're looking for, for sim win, right. So the win function right here. So it's at this particular memory address right here. Uh, we're going to have to take a note of that, but the thing is, is that because we're dealing with um, because we're dealing with little endian order byte order, we have to take note of this um, memory address in reverse order. So it'd be AO the first the last two bytes right here, and then one one, and then four zero. So it's a uh, it's an opposite order, but we're going by twos. Okay, so I'm going to take note of that, just a second. So it's A0 and then 1-1 one, one, and then 4-0. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so next we're going to exit. Do we want to quit? Yes. Do we want to quit the process? Yes. Okay, so next we're going to send a um, we're going to use a Python command to send different bytes to the program. So the bytes that we're going to send are going to do a bunch of different things in the program. So let me let me pull up the program first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the write to buffer. So we're going to write to buffer, and then we're going to write our the um, the bytes that include the that include the address of the win function. Uh, but not only that, we're going to fill the buffer first, uh, in which case we need to fill the buffer with, um, with 32 bytes of information, uh, because that's going to let us overflow, overflow the buffer. And then we're going to include the, 
and then we're going to include the memory address of the memory address of the win function, and then we're going to then we're going to use the print flag function over here. So let's uh, let's get into this program first, and then I'm going to show you the the Python command we're going to use. So Python, Python C for command, we're going to import the sys function uh, for the sys system function and then system standard out buffer right and then these bytes over here. So it's going to be, we're going to select right to buffer with this command with this with these bytes right here and then we're going to select the, the bytes. Um, so it's a bunch of A's, 32 of them. And then we're going to send the bytes that include the, uh, the memory the memory address of the win function over here, and then we're going to select uh, enter, and then we're going to select print out the flag, um, that particular print flag, which is uh, which is this one right here, and these are all the bytes that correspond with that. So when we run this command, it's going to pipe all of this into the challenge binary over here, and so it uh, brings up the it brings up the output over here of the of the program, and then we got the flag, which is the content of the flag file that we specified in when we created the when we created this file inside this directory. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to do the same thing, but we need to access the um, access this version of the program that's running in the server. So to do that, we need to go over to Pico CTF and we need to launch the instance over here. So after that's done, it gives us the um, it gives us the command to access the program on the server, which is um, this server right here on this port. So I'm going to copy this. Then go back to the web shell, and then we're going to bring back the um, the command we used previously, and then we're going to paste in the um, the server and the port where we can access this program. It's gonna it's going to access the server, and then it's gonna pipe in this uh, this Python command right here, and then we should get the flag after we've run this command. So we run the command. So it accesses the, the program in the server there, which has the actual flag. And then we overwrote the buffer and supplied the address of the win function. And that got us the flag, which is this right here. So you can copy the flag and then go to the challenge description page and paste in the flag and click on submit. Okay, so before we finish, let's go over to the challenge again. And if you haven't done so, please rate positive this challenge right here with the thumbs up button. Hey there, hacker frogs. Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel, and it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.